the icons of real estate podcast. Are you ready to learn the proven money-making secrets from top producing icon agents? Ready to skyrocket your business? This podcast is for you. Tune in every week with your host, Tomasz Fonseca, and find out how to implement proven strategies to 10 times your business. From $3 million to $30 million in just 12 months. Brought to you by the Masters in Real Estate Marketing, Arter SEO. Hello, guys, and welcome to another episode of the Icons of Real Estate podcast. With us today, we have Andrea Bloom. She's a global team leader and licensed real estate broker at eXp Realty. Andrea helps agents make seven digits and achieve financial freedom with the Top Agent Academy, starting out with no budget, no team member, no assistant, no contacts whatsoever. Andrea managed to sell hundreds of millions of dollars in volume by herself with very little to no expenses. Well, how did she manage to do that? We're going to find out here on the Icons of Real Estate podcast. Welcome to the show, Andrea. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's our pleasure. So tell me, uh, tell me all about uh, this journey. So you told us uh, that you were an immigrant. You came out of, uh, you came into this country. So where are you originated from? Uh, I'm from Romania. Originally from Romania, moved to Canada, 2007. Nice. And why, why did you, why did you move to Canada? What was the objective? Um, I, I grew up in, in Romania and I think it was one of my dreams to, um, to come into what we perceived in Romania, especially as a kid, you know, the American dream. And it was one of my goals. And uh, in 2007, I, I had the opportunity to, to move here. I immigrated here um, and started basically from scratch um, with no money in my pocket, <laughs> with zero um, zero at all levels, um, and um, it, not an easy journey, but definitely one that I would do it again anytime. Yeah. Nice. So, so yeah, you wanted to have the American dream, and you chose to have the Canadian dream as well. <laughs> and and yeah, Andreas. Yeah, for, for <laughs> as a Romanian, Canadian, Romanian, uh, Canadian or um, U.S., it was pretty similar mm -hmm. um and actually at some point had the opportunity to potentially move to united states and after analyzing the pluses and minuses canada came on top so uh, we we decided to stay here yeah perfect perfect as long as you're happy <laughs> so uh so yeah. tell me how did uh, uh how did real estate get in in, in your life well, it's it's a it's almost like a funny story. Um, I I I was actually very happy with my profession back home, and and it was a profession that translated in Canada very easily. I was a um, special effect makeup artist for movie industry, mm. and and had the opportunity to work do quite a number of feature movies um, in, in back home. So when I moved here, it was pretty easy for me to be part of the union because here you have to be part of the union to to work in this field um, and yet when when I um, started to to look for jobs it became very clear for me in a very short period of time that um, it's almost a sort of monopole and you're not going to be able to expand at the level mm -hmm. you want um, even if you put in the work so it was pretty easy I, I just went home and I googled um, I, I think there was no thinking process, no discovering, um, you know, no accidental um, happenings. It's just like Google, what would be, you know, my, my way of making a living in a country where my language at the time was very poor. Um, I didn't have the money to go to schools and universities and minded I was, you know, quite old at the time when I moved. So starting really to go back to school it wasn't an option I had a, a kid that there was no parents around here so there were quite some challenges there so um, my number one priority was to be able to be an entrepreneur um, I definitely didn't want to have a, a job from nine to five and I start googling what will what would work here um, and and what would I be qualified in the shortest period of time and will give me the financial freedom I wanted and every time I 
Google this, it just came back always to, to real estate. So mm -hmm. um, I, I think I, I picked real estate. Real estate didn't pick me. I, I, I picked real estate and I, um, I never looked back. That was the end of it. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, it's good to have sometimes people you know that they make up the other uh, oh i didn't pick real estate real estate pick me you know and it's fun it's fun to hear that you you say the opposite because yeah. i specifically can pick real estate <laughs> so yeah, and i the, specifically picked and uh how, so how, how did it start how was the the process of starting it obviously now you're with exp but you were not always with exp were you no, I wasn't. I um, I actually started on like everybody else. EXP in Canada, it's, it's been around not for long, and mm -hmm. um, and, and you know when you start, you you start like everybody else, trying to figure out which brokerage to join. What are you supposed to do? And it was extremely confusing. Um, it, it's really unbelievable the fact that we have right now the resources of the internet, the resources of the social media, the resources of being part of a brokerage like EXP and so on. At the time, you're just you're in the nowhere land um, where you have to figure out things. So uh, the process of getting the license it's actually a little bit longer than in many of United States. Um, mm. Um, areas that I hear people can, you know, finish 30 hours of, of studying and get a license here, you actually go to a college and oh. you spend about 60 months to a year, um, depending on how fast you can do it. But in the meantime, I had a part-time job and I had a kid that, you know, there were no grandparents around. So um, it took me about a year and um, I, um, I decided to be an assistant for a team um, in one of the uh, larger uh, franchises, uh, Remax, and um, I think there I've, I've learned a lot, um, and I've learned very fast that I don't want to be part of a team, <laughs> um, one of the things that I've learned, um, but um, I was very, um, very happy with the brokerage at the time, you know, when you don't know what you need, it's hard to, to really pinpoint um, what, what changes you should make or what you're looking for. It was clear for me from the beginning that in order for me to make it into this business, I needed a coach. I came from an environment where apprenticeship was mandatory. You could have not become a key makeup artist in the movie industry unless you started from scratch, like Louis uh, wiping the floors, which I've done um, in my career um, in, in makeup. So I knew that it has to have a, a certain element of, of the same process. So um, I, I was thinking at the time that the broker managers and broker records, um, this is their role to, you know, to be under their wings, but they weren't producing. So it was really confusing for me what would be the alternative. Um, so again, I start Google, thank God for, <laughs> you know, <laughs> solves a lot of problems. Um, and I, I realized that I, I need to, to find a coach. It wasn't that popular at the time. Um, to have a coach, at least in Canada, you have to understand that the dynamics between Canada and the United States are a little bit different. So 90% of the coaches and not many that I found actually at the time, they were in the United States. Mm -hmm. So it was a no brainer. Um, I, I enroll in coaching and my business exploded right away. Um, it was very regimented things that I also liked. I was used to that type of regimented type of, of work from the movie industry where everything is very, you know, strict. Um, so going into coaching and having someone telling you what to do and how to do it was very reassuring and, and the results came out right away. Um, but it, it came with an enormous amount of, of work. Um, I, I think a lot of agents don't understand um, the difference between being you know, a self-employed and an entrepreneur and, and um, not having a boss and, and putting in the work of becoming a salesperson, not a marketing person. I think there's a huge confusion here that we see all the time, and especially with the social media where, um, you know, um, agents confuse the, the job as being a marketing job when in fact it's a pure sales job. Um, and and that, that's my, my strong opinion. And I see it more and more, including agents within EXP that, that 
joined. A lot of them are actually part of um, past coaching programs that I was part of. Um, and if we're looking at, at agents with high, high production, um, they they all agree that this business is based on on sales and and not on marketing. Marketing is something you need, um, but I I always make this analogy. Think about your your real estate business as an organization, and there's different departments, and you have the department of marketing, you have the operation department, you have the admin department, and you have the sales department. And if you look at these departments, the marketing department will never be paid as much as the sales department. The sales department usually are paid as much as the CEOs of the company. Um, and there is a reason for that. Um, but a lot of agents tend to gravitate towards the marketing department and they do want to have the payouts of the sales department, mm -hmm. but they're never going to be able to do that because the reality is um, salespeople would always net more money in the pocket in any organization than the marketing department. So um to me, it was always, always about, about sales, regardless if you sell yourself, regardless if you sell a house, regardless if you grow your business, it has to be based on, on sales. At the end of the day, we are in production. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, it, it, I completely agree with you because it doesn't matter if you have the top marketing of the world, if you don't sell, you die. So it's like, uh, you need to sell to survive. You need to sell to thrive and to grow. So I completely agree with you in terms of investing yeah. uh, parts, uh, like the great parts of your coaching into that sales and making sure that agents know this is a sales job. You're here to sell houses. And, and this is the way I actually end up creating my coaching program. Um, it, it's surrounded the idea of, of the sales and not marketing. I think, um, and, and it's part of, of the academy as well, where you have a marketing integrated in your business, um, but that's something that someone else should take care of. You as a salesperson and as a driving force of your um, numbers and your income, you should not be spending your time in, in marketing, period. That's something that you outsource. Um, you're not learning it to do it. And by the way, there's people that do it much better than you. Um, if you're a salesperson, then stick with that. Um, and, and become one. So my, my course itself, it's based solo into growing a business that expands based on you having at the core center, the sales system um, and all the other systems to help this portion, which is the money-making um, you know, portion of the business. Okay, so if we're talking about uh, Top Agent Academy, so it's, you're saying it's more, it's, just focused on on the sales parts like it doesn't it doesn't talk about let's say like lead generation or something like that no it, it does absolutely lead generation is in my opinion is one of the um money making activities okay if right. you will in our business so it does have a portion of business plan creation of lead generating um but it has a huge huge portion of sales techniques which are a little bit lost in especially in in today's um, world um, mm -hmm. where everybody kind of wants to do the 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 fun part you know the singing part the the video part which are mm -hmm. all fantastic and they're part of the you know the marketing portion but there is a portion of sales techniques that that is kind of being lost in the the beauty of trends that they keep coming and going keep coming and going um, and and in order to, to build something that it's sustainable, it has, it has to has, have at the base core the reality of what we're doing. And the reality is as real estate agents, we're selling homes between buyers and sellers. Mm -hmm. That's where we make the most money. Um, and um, and that's, that require sales more than anything else. The other ones are around, you know, it's like talking about, you know, a brand like Coca-Cola, everybody knows it because they have an, an tremendous marketing. But if that marketing will not be backed up by sales, which are actually in the end, you know, millions and billions of dollars of contracts done by salespeople that you don't see them um, in the marketing, um, that company would never have the money to pay the marketing department to do what they're doing. So um, it is 
um, it is a, you know, a, a synergy between all of these departments, but at the end of the day, the self has to happen in order for the company to, um, to survive and, and continue doing the marketing. So I, I see a huge, huge trend, I would say in the last three years between um, agents focusing um, um, at their, you know, at their scale, which is many of them, uh, it's a small scale. So you're not a corporation, you're not a, a brokerage, you're not a, um, you know, where you can invest that that money into the marketing, um, that they are spending 90% of their time in the marketing department, mm -hmm. not closing uh, transactions for the sale. So that's where I found that that um, um, there was a lock in in, uh, in in the in the coaching world of of the feedback um, that at the end of the day, you know. Um, likes are amazing, uh, followers are amazing, but you have to close the deal. Um, and you can get an enormous amount of leads from, from social media, but you have to close the deal. You know, you have to, to be able to, um, to close the deal, which means now I got the lead because of the marketing, but I need to close the deal. And that requires to be a salesperson. And not only that, in a market like today, where everything changes, because we no longer um, require just to put a sign in front of a house and put it on MLS and we'll sell in three hours. Now the market is changing. And we see an enormous amount of, ex, uh, you know, terminated um, uh, and and suspended listing, and you you put all this effort, you get a listing, and hey, it's not selling. Um, and you have to have the skills to know the market, to understand the sales part of the of 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 real estate, to have the skills of sales with your clients, to have the sales skills with negotiation with buyers, to bring that offer to the table and close it. So. Um, in a market like this, more than ever, it's mandatory to understand sales and and less of a marketing and and delegate the 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 marketing portion. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you, and I think this is this is the first time this sort of perspective or idea is is brought on on the show. You know, like no one has ever touched this this point about like. That yeah, social media is is great and it's all fairy tales. It's, but, I I if you ask me, I think social media was almost like the invention of the telephone. You know, like <laughs> it completely changed the world of business. And I think it's an amazing tool. I hire. I I, I highly highly recommend using it. Um, but if you know, if you don't have the skills to close the deal, close the deal in a sense of getting by, of getting hired by your clients that you find on social media. You don't have the skills to um, close the, the, the client with the price that is realistic on this market, then you're gonna end up just losing money because you're spending on, on, on marketing for the properties, you're spending it on, on whatever you're spending to get the lead, you're, you're spending your time and then you're not closing. You're not closing for appointments. You're not closing for a listing sign. You're not closing for a, a sold property. And and what's what's the purpose? It it does look good um, on on social media if you look at your feed, but your account, you know, in the bank says something else. Yeah. So. Exactly. <laughs> and you smile. I think you smile more at your bank account than you smile at your Instagram profile. <laughs> you, will be, you will be surprised. A lot of people actually smile at their Instagram way more often than your bank account. <laughs> my, my philosophy is, you know, use whatever it takes to, to get there. But the final goal is, is not the vanity of, of an image is how am I going to spend my summers and my weekends and the days off and the months off and my financial freedom with my family um, to make sure that that that's at the end of the day, that's, that's life, you know? Yeah. Um, so. Yeah. But that, that will depend the values from, from each, each, each own as its own, its own values. Right. Yes. Yeah. But if you ask a majority, they're, they're looking, you know, um, they're they're posting, they're advertising for the purpose of 
closing transactions. At the end of the day, you have to close transactions. So um, the academy was built on, on that concept of um, learning all the other aspects of the business, the marketing, the social media, the generating leads, the business plan, the uh, creation of your vision and so on. But most importantly, um, having a very clear understanding of skills uh, in terms of uh, understanding market, understanding pricing, understanding selling. And that's a hard thing to do. I, um, I, I, I coach a lot of agents and, um, it, you know, some, some of them, um, you know, they, they may be challenged by the fact that in, in this social media world, they need to make videos, but then the, the moment they have to come down to, hey, but now I have to learn what to say and how to say it and understand market mm-hmm. and learn and, 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 and learn to anticipate and learn to properly help my clients, that becomes a, a completely different level of skills that, hey, this is not a, a, a you know, a TikTok dance that I have to learn here. This is psychology. This is, um, you know, verbal speech, and 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 um, it's almost like acting school, and it's so much behind it in terms of understanding personality types, learning what words you should use, how you should use it, the inflection of your of your voice and your tone. Like there's so much behind it that when they're enrolling and they're presented with with this challenge, all of a sudden they never even thought about that these things should be done. They really thought that it comes down to posting a nice picture, learning how to dance on TikTok um, and hoping that, that you know, um, people will message them, which they will. Um, but if there's no substance after that, yeah. where you come across like the specialist and you know what you're saying and you know how to do it, um, I can tell you that any agent that you compete with that does no social media or no TikToks or no nothing, but does has that skill of, of learning what to say, how to say it, and how to close the transaction will eat you alive in a second. Because at the end of the day, someone who is putting the best equity and, and millions and millions of dollars in your hands they are going to be impressed by your social presence, but at the time that they need to to sign a contract, it kicks in a different type of of need, which mm-hmm. is the need of trust that you are the professional, and that only transpire by knowing what to say and how to say it, and and understanding that you know, the market and pricing and so on. I mean, we can go in, into yeah. this on and on. So that's why I'm saying you're going to be eaten alive by someone who is putting the effort on both ends versus someone who's putting the effort only into the marketing and the image uh, in order to create, um, uh, you know, leads and, and people to reach out. Well, this portion is, it's more important because you can leave this aside and and still make a ton of money by having only this if you do both you probably you win at at this game Mm -hmm. but if you do only this you're gonna you know you're gonna do this 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 but then when you come here you're gonna fall you're really gonna fall so you have to make sure that you you're doing both yeah and what i was saying sometimes like we're looking for a new podcast guest and of course we want the top influencers with the biggest teams, but we also want the top producers to, to find out how, how they're doing it. And sometimes there's agents like doing more than 200, 300 transactions a year, which is sometimes more than a single team does. And I tried to Google Google them and contact with them and they're nowhere. Like I don't even, I don't even can get them on Instagram. Sometimes they have like 56 followers and a photo of their dog, you know, but, but they're yeah. closing more transactions than, than, any, anybody than, than anybody else you know so i think yeah the sales the sales part is is massively important and of course the best case scenario the shangri-la would be to have those two aligned um and be, because of course your image your lead generation process of course that's super important as well but if you don't close it's more <laughs> might as well sell your instagram it's a waste account. of time it's a yeah. waste of time exactly 
So uh, with the, the Top Agent Academy, obviously it's your, it's your coaching business, but you also align that with your team at EXP or is it a, a separate, uh, are two separate things? I'm not sure I understand the question. Wait, what you so mean? with Top Agent Academy, is that part of your e EXP uh, team or uh, is it a coaching business on the side? So I, good question. I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that I make things a clear because a lot of agents that text me on on Instagram and my mm -hmm. social media they get confused. So I'm a real estate agent. I'm actually a real estate broker. So that's my main focus, which means I serve buyers and sellers to buy and sell homes. Now I have a, a coaching company which is um, the Top Agent Academy. Um, this coaching company is um, available for purchase and is offered for free for anyone that joins eXp through mm -hmm. naming me their sponsor. Um, that's one thing. Um, everyone that joins with eXp obviously gets way more training and coaching from me on one-on-one -on -one and we meet in person and on Zooms and, and anything else, but it's beyond the scope of, of this podcast. Um, then my, my um, local team is it's called the bloom real estate which again does um you know just production there are the agents that join with me that they're locally and and we do just production and then there is the um, um top agent group which is my extended um my extended um uh, group within the exp which are the agents that join and name me their, spon their mm. sponsor within the EXP. And they are from Canada and from United States. Um, and um, I hope I hope I made it clear. Yeah. So no, it, it's clear. It's like three different three different vectors and they combine sometimes. But yeah, how, how many agents do you have on the on the top agent group at this present moment present moment? So right now we're 25 of us. Yeah. 25 and then how many on the bloom real estate on the bloom real estate right now there's only two other people all right all right yeah besides me yes yeah all right and then i guess the next the next part i would i was gonna ask like uh, what is your goals i guess i i would i was gonna ask now for your team but i can ask as well uh, in terms because we we want to know so we know where you came from you know uh, what the value you have to offer, and now, and now what, Andrea? <laughs> what is what is tomorrow? What is what do you have uh, for us in two thousand and twenty-two, and maybe in a bit more long term? So um, locally, um, I I never actually felt the need of expanding massively in terms of the uh, people joining uh, under my um, you know. Uh, my name. I'm a huge, huge believer that everybody should build their own brand and their own, you know, um, their own business. Mm -hmm. So I've never been part of a team myself. When I started, um, I, I, I was in a position because I had leads, because I had business to create a small, tiny team, local team. But these people are paying me a cut. And that's something that I'm not a fan of. I don't encourage people to join on the team structures. Um, and if they do so, I encourage them to come and, and expand after a, a while. And we've seen actually um, this very, very much um, that you know, team members, um, they, they stay within the team structure anywhere between six to eight months in average. So mm -hmm. that's something that I basically rolled all the time in my, my team. And, and I found it that before EXP was hard because you kind of get people, you get them to a point and then they leave. With EXP now, they get into my team, they, they roll through the hard part, and then they still stay with EXP within my extended team mm -hmm. or you call a team it's extended group mm -hmm. which is within exp so you allow people to actually grow expand and grow their own businesses rather than um, becoming that obsessive type of you know uh, team leader that wants to keep people under the 
team splits and 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 make money that way so that was never my my intent so um i'm probably gonna keep rolling the agents that they're in my local team um as they come and as they grow and uh, as they're pushed into you know going forward and and grow themselves um i i am very selective believe it or not into growing the um exp um and, and, uh, downline um i realized that for me it's very important that the production stays high and that the people that actually join have high production and uh and for me i'm very selective of the people that end up joining us and we they have to kind of be aligned with our philosophy of you know first and foremost um at the top of everything it's production making sure that that's what they grow investments we grow as as you know um creating opportunities through investment to become landlords and so on so it, it is a little bit I know you you talk to a lot of EXP agents, and I think it's a little bit of a different approach from from what I've seen because I also when I join I interview a lot of of agents and 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 making sure that I I put you know what what fit my criteria and what I needed. So um, I'm not um, I'm not necessary into creating a huge massive downline, um, but I think quality is it's my number one it was actually the same uh, when I was 100% involved in production it was the idea of of serving not a huge huge number of clients um, but having a you know a high point of um, average sales price so the commission is good and and good sales um, and so that that's my 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 goal so um Overall, I think uh, my transition this year um, is in becoming more of the team leader um, and growing together with um, the 25 of us. So that's that's my goal, to make sure that they are provided with uh, a lot of resources, a lot of support, making sure that, you know, they're they're uh, taken care of. So that's my priority number one when it comes to um expanding um otherwise it's kind of you know you build something that's constantly falling apart um because if you're focusing a lot into uh, big big numbers then you definitely expand so fast that you don't have um the capacity of of supporting the people and they become a numbers game mm -hmm. so for me it's all about um looking at each and individual um growing their businesses and and um growing together yeah nice looks awesome andrea and I, i do i do love the your perspective and how you uh look into care of of your business you know it's not it's not always the same here on the podcast so i appreciate you bringing like a, a tiny bit different uh, different perspectives so people can see you know it's not always always the same thing <laughs> So, yeah. so tell me after, of course, if someone has reached this time of the podcast, you know, it means they're quite interested in, uh, in, in, uh, in you and we didn't bore them to death. So please tell, uh, tell them how can uh, uh, they reach out to you? Um, most people, they reach out to me on, um, on Instagram. Um, if they never heard of me or they, they listen to the podcast. So it's the top agent group. Um, there's also the Top Agent Academy, um, where they can sign up for, uh, you know, having a one-on-one -on -one consultation for their business with me. Um, and that's pretty much it. Like the, 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 the usuals, you know, the LinkedIn, the Facebook, and they're all under the Top Agent um, group. Mm -hmm. And um, my Facebook uh, page is under Andrea Bloom. Yeah, I can I can speak from experience that you're not hard to find. <laughs> okay, Andrea, thank you so much for coming. I hope that you enjoyed as much as I did. I loved hearing your story and uh, your uh, very deep belief in the power of sales. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna transmit that to more people. <laughs> Absolutely. Learn, learn what to say and how to say it. And regardless of what's happening in, in the world, regardless of what's happening in the economy, regardless of what's happening, if one platform becomes 
you know, we've seen this actually with Instagram, all of a sudden uh, top, you know, people that were relying on Instagram, TikTok took, took over and they've seen a huge dip. Um, but if you have something that it's outside, anything that has to do with marketing, that it's your power, regardless of how many platforms are coming into trend and regardless of the economy or anything that happens in, in the market, you have a superpower, which is, you know, having your business running regardless of what's going on around it. Yeah, it was even that day. I don't know if you remember. It was, uh, I think, a few months ago. I don't keep track of time very well. Uh, but it was a day when Facebook, WhatsApp, and Instagram they all went down. And yes. I can I can imagine everyone saying, everyone thinking like, oh damn. <laughs> like I, all I don't, yeah don't get me wrong i don't think the internet will just dis ever disappear i think it will evolve um the the idea of putting your eggs in one basket that it's mm -hmm. something that you cannot control that can exactly. be there forever but we've seen the most recent one was i mean i'm old enough to know the platform changed you know from myspace to mm -hmm. this to that to um so we've seen that um and and the problem is that if you're not holding something that it you can control then your business depends on on something that can crumble very very fast and we've seen this recently with tiktok two years ago how you know people that have no followers on instagram they become stars overnight on instagram and the audience has a certain amount of time per day dedicated to social media which is a huge amount in my opinion way, um, way too much. More than they should, but they would you know um divide that and we've seen the stats of facebook and instagram how they lost um an enormous amount of people time watch um towards tiktok and not to say that in a couple of years instead of tiktok we're gonna have other platforms that will break the 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 internet and mm -hmm. all of a sudden if your business is just on one platform um and you know you don't would hold draw something that it's yours that it's powerful that that nobody can take then you're in trouble then you're in trouble but i guess if you listen to the podcast you're less in trouble because i guess you know what to do and and yeah thank you andrea for everything and yeah have a good one you too thank you so much mm -hmm.